Hello! In this video I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on these two beautifully designed box sets that recently came out. I am of course referring to volumes 1 and 2 of Class by Big Finish. I've mentioned before on this channel I'm a massive fan of Class, but I'm not blind and it does have its faults. And it's got a lot of hate for them. But what I like about Class is the characters, and how I wish the show had more time to flesh out these relationships to make them more believable. Thankfully, we have the free class books, which do exactly that, and offer a likeable insight into the class gang, but it'd still be nice to see a little more. So, that's what I'm hoping these box sets will do. But, despite being a devoted class fan, I wanted to go into these with an open mind, and not just blindsided by my love for class. Even if you're not a class fan, you can't deny that the cover art is stunning. I particularly like how they spread the characters over the two box sets. I love this colour scheme and it's very reminiscent of the title sequence, which is a nice touch to link both the TV and Big Finish versions of Class, so judging these on looks alone, I'm already impressed. If you didn't know, each box set contains three stories, more often than not revolving around two characters. Big Finish have often paired up characters in their Torchwood audios, but unfortunately Owen and Yanto, for example, were more fleshed out than most of the Class cast due to the longevity of Torchwood so are able to hold the viewer attention. In some cases in this, the pairings felt strange, and it would have been nice to see more of the gang as a whole, to further explore the relationships between all the characters I mentioned at the start. On the other hand, this did however give Big Finish the opportunity to explore the duos of characters without having to focus on the entire gang, which worked well in most cases, developing each character beyond what we've seen previously, as well as playing off their existing strengths. But despite this point, the pairing formula did work well, particularly in the first story of Volume 1, Gifted, which sees Ram's desire to further his football career lead him to danger, whilst April befriends a new boy over their shared interest in music. However, both of them find themselves in peril in pursuit of their respective career paths. It's an interesting story, and one that fits very well into the world of class and sixth form, exploring friendships and finding future career prospects whilst dealing with an alien threat. It also explores the troubles Ram faces after the events of For Tonight We Might Die, in which he lost his leg. We also get to see more of April's welcoming and friendly personality as she develops her friendship with Thomas. Big Finish have done a fine job replicating the tone of class, and somehow the mix of light-hearted humour and gore works better on audio. Maybe because it's not so in your face. All stories in these two box sets are set in the first half of the series, and given the previous events referenced, in this story in particular, it seems to be set somewhere after episode 3, Night Visiting, as Charlie and Mateus are already an established couple, and besides a quick Quill reference, this is all you see of the other characters in this story. Given its point in the class timeline, this is also very early on in April and Ram's relationship. I always found April and Ram's relationship strange, particularly who was so mean to her in the first few episodes, so it was nice to explore that element of their friendship and more flirtatious side, which given the length of the first series, seemed somewhat forced or missing from the show. However, Ram and April remain true to their already established characters, so you can expect plenty of football and folklore references, as well as several mentions of April's traumatic past. But hey, at least she's not a shadowkin. The next story from Volume 1, Life Experience, was unfortunately my least favourite of this volume, and an example where the pairing formula didn't work so well. Even though Ram and Tanya's friendship was fun to watch in small Skype interactions we saw in the show, it seemed non-existent in this story and it was overshadowed by an array of not-as-interesting side characters. It is Ram and Tanya on work experience at a local laboratory, which is hiding some sinister secret, and as with every story involving a laboratory with a secret, something goes wrong. There are some nice moments, however, in the snippets we do see of Ram and Tanya, where Ram sincerely compliments Tanya's intelligence, backing the point that they have more chemistry than him and April, and a setting which lends itself to further explore Tanya's strengths particularly her vast knowledge of everything, including science. Whilst I didn't personally enjoy this story, it was interesting to see a plot that wasn't entirely focused around the tears or rifts in time that are the root cause for most of class's problems. And the final story in Volume 1 is by far the strongest of the three, and not just because it's about my two favourite characters, Charlie and Mateus, but because it's a unique and interesting plot which sets it apart from the other stories. Tell Me You Love Me follows Charlie and Mateus at the end of a school day, and they're alone however not as alone as they first thought. After Mateusz finds himself unable to stop talking, the only person who can help them is Quill, 
I won't say too much more as I don't want to spoil anything, but this plot very much reminded me of Midnight, so if you're a fan of that story, there's no doubt you'll enjoy this. This is also the first time we see Quill in Volume 1, and their three contrasting personalities were really entertaining to listen to. We see more of her obligation to protect Charlie, which works well in dealing with the threat, and leads to some humorous exchanges between the two of them. We also get to see more of Charlie and Ritesh, in more ways than one. Whilst having some mature scenes to remind us that these are teenagers and they're crazy in love or whatever, Tell Me You Love Me was actually really gripping. I mean, besides essentially just being 50 minutes of Charlie and Ritesh doing coupley things, it was by far the best story for doing what I wanted to see more of from class. Stripping back the- okay, that was a portrait of words- but exploring the characters' feelings and intentions with an unintrusive but engaging plot. I would definitely recommend this story. Moving on to Volume 2, we start with Everybody Loves Reagan. I genuinely love this story, and it was exactly what I wanted to see more of from class. We are introduced to a new character, Reagan, who has moved to Cole Hill School, and instantly everybody falls in love with her, except for April. When trying to discuss this with the rest of the group, well, everyone except Charlie Mateusz, who for some reason aren't in this, it causes conflict and entertains the idea that not everything is alien or comes from the tears, and perhaps people just don't like April. Despite also featuring Ram and Tanya, April is definitely the main character of this story, and we again get to see her more studious side. Much like her setting up prom in for Tonight We Might Die, we see April trying to do more for the school and helping people, and how this affects her relationship with Ram. This story explores the more vulnerable side of April, that was referenced in the show, and explores her insecurities from being nice, which is very effective. Speaking of Ram, he is genuinely funny and likeable in this story, despite dealing with grief and some heavy subject matter, whilst Tanya faces troubles with trying to fit in and being a high achiever. Reagan as a character is very likeable and serves as a means to cause conflict between the characters, something that seems to be a theme throughout Volume 2. This is something we've also seen in the series, with one of my favourite episodes, Detained, which also sees the characters at odds with one another. It's an effective premise and plays off the idea of friendships in school being very fickle. Now moving on to what might possibly be my favourite story of both volumes, which is Now You Know, and I'm just going to read the entire description for this one, because it's a brilliant story, and whatever I say won't do it justice. Following a series of freak attacks on staff and pupils, Tanya and Mateusz find themselves investigating mystery that dates back to the 1960s. Together they hope to solve it, even if it means turning on one another to do so. This story felt very torturedy to me, perhaps because it plays around with the rift, or tears as class calls them, and the idea of it messing with people's lives. I really love the stories that focus on more mundane aspects, and it doesn't actually mention it in the description, but a large theme of this story is how Mateusz and Tanya cope with bullying, which is a huge part of school life, and something that hasn't previously been explored in class. We see Tanya being targeted for being younger than her peers, and Mateusz for being a gay immigrant. I thought the way the subject matter was handled was extremely effective, and felt believable. This is the side of class that's essentially just Waterloo Road with aliens, and I love it. I've mentioned that my favourite character is Mateusz, and one of my favourite things about his character is how moral and willing to stand up for what he believes in he is, as well as how comfortable he is in being himself. Both of these traits were amplified tenfold throughout this story. He's just so likeable. I genuinely didn't think it was possible to make me like his character more than I already did, and this story has achieved that. We also get to see more of his and Tanya's friendship, something that was only briefly seen in the TV series, and they worked really well together. As well as introducing us to other students at Coal Hill, making it seem more fleshed out than just the five we already know of, it was a hilarious and thought-provoking story, and if Big Finish do make more class stories, then I really want there to be more like this. And last we have probably the most anticipated story from these volumes, to most people, and that is In Remembrance in which Quill and Charlie encounter a mysterious intruder, also known as Ace, and a Dalek roaming around Coal Hill. Being honest, I was underwhelmed. Whilst obviously it's great to have a sequel to such an iconic classic Who story, Remembrance of the Daleks, it felt the Dalek in this story, and Charlie, for that matter, were underused. You spend most of the time listening to Quill clashing with Ace, as she is her usual feisty self, whilst Ace is so wholesome in this story. This does, however, lead to some fun scenes between the two of them, and some interesting character development with Quill. We see more of how she's coping with the loss of her species, and living with the Arn in her head. This leads to some dangerous and questionable choices that could jeopardise Ace's attempts to stop the Dalek. I was a bit sad that Charlie didn't get to do too much in this story, although his scenes were fun and entertaining. Whilst it would have been nice to see Quill not be so cocky all the time and actually see her faced by something, 
It was entertaining to see Ace put up with her throughout the story. Overall, it was a fun listen, and I definitely recommend it, especially if you are a Remembrance fan, as there are some fun references throughout, and Ace is, well, Ace. And that's all my thoughts on these two box sets, so sorry for rambling, I'm just really enthusiastic about Glass. They were both really enjoyable, but I definitely preferred the second. I think the stories were just more to my taste, although Tell Me You Love Me from the first set was very enjoyable. I would recommend these, even if you're not a fan of Glass. Although there was a fair bit of fan service in these, which I personally loved, you could easily listen to these without having an up-to-date knowledge of the TV series, as there's not much mention of anything beyond the first half, and even then, there's very little mention of the Shadow King or Korokinus at Naples' shared heart. Feel free to disagree with my opinions, and thank you very much for watching.